In June of 1942, Convoy PQ-17, consisting of nearly 300 aircraft, 600 tanks, over 4,000 trucks, and a general cargo of over 150,000 tons, took off from Valfjord, Iceland, on its way to the port of Arkhangelsk in the Soviet Union. The operation was one of the Allied efforts to help the Nazi-invaded Soviet Union, but during the treacherous journey, a series of miscommunications and rushed decisions left the convoy unprotected. German U-boats and torpedo-carrying aircraft incessantly attacked the American war vehicles, resulting in the worst convoy disaster of World War II. The most treacherous trip in the world. After the invasion of the Soviet Union by Nazi Germany in the summer of 1941 during Operation Barbarossa, the Allies found themselves with a new possible but unlikely ally, Russia. Despite their clashing political views, the British and American governments agreed to help the Soviets, and soon Winston S. Churchill came up with an idea to launch a convoy line through the Arctic Ocean from Iceland to Arkhangelsk in northern Russia. Similar massive operations had already delivered essential supplies to other nations in need, but the situation in Russia posed a more challenging journey. Sailing around northern Norway exposed these caravans to the largest concentration of German U-boats in Europe. Consequently, the warships had strict orders from Churchill that no ships should stop and that individuals who fell overboard would be left behind. The convoys would need to be much smaller than those that sailed across the Atlantic to Great Britain. They would also need to be heavily escorted by destroyers, as they would have to face both the German resistance and the most severe weather conditions on the planet, with freezing temperatures, constant fog, midnight sun, and 60-foot-tall waves. Even Churchill once referred to these Arctic convoys as, quote, the most treacherous trip in the world. PQ-17 By 1942, 12 more Arctic convoys had made the treacherous journey, with a loss of only one out of 103 ships, successfully delivering 750 tanks, 800 aircraft, 2,300 vehicles, and over 100,000 tons of general cargo to the Soviet Union. Initially, the Allied convoys to Russia went unnamed and unnumbered to remain classified. However, a coding system was eventually established. All travels bound to the Soviet Union were designated PQ, while the returning ones were QP. The largest and most valuable convoy until then was ready to sail for Russia in June of 1942. Before its departure, several American and English officers argued that the trip should be postponed until the shorter winter days, but Russia desperately needed the help, and no changes were made. With a cargo worth $700 million by that time's currency, PQ-17 consisted of nearly 300 aircraft, 600 tanks, over 4,000 trucks, and a general cargo of over 150,000 tons. These supplies were enough to equip an army of around 50,000 Soviet soldiers to take on the Nazis. The PQ-17 Arctic convoy left Reykjavik, Iceland on June 27th under the command of Commodore John Dowding. The caravan consisted of 35 cargo ships, of which 22 were American, 8 were British, two Russian, two Panamanian, and one Dutch. The cargo ships were escorted by six destroyers and 15 other armed vessels. Additionally, a cruiser force consisting of USS Tuscaloosa and Wichita, three US destroyers, and the British HMS London and Norfolk steamed 40 miles away from the convoy to provide close cover. Additional protection was provided by the Royal Navy's home fleet, which included the battleship HMS Duke of York, two cruisers, and 14 destroyers. They were also reinforced by USS Washington and the carrier HMS Victorious, which sailed from its base in Scapa Flow, Scotland, the following day. They would trail PQ-17 by 200 miles. But unbeknownst to the Allies, several details about the convoy's size and cargo had already reached the Nazis. On July 1, 1942, a German reconnaissance aircraft flew over the PQ-17 convoy just as the caravan passed DP-13, a returning convoy. However, due to the ship's intermingling, the pilot mistook the actual size of the convoy, and the Kriegsmarine commanders sent two U-boats to the location. The Germans then decided to spare the returning convoy, and set their sights on the heavily laden PQ-17. No time to waste. Admiral Sir Dudley Pound, head of the Royal Navy, closely monitored the convoy back in London. On July 3rd, one of his intel reports confirmed that the German battleship Tirpitz had left her port. The second of two Bismarck-class battleships, Tirpitz was Germany's largest ship, and due to delays in decoding incoming transmissions, it was impossible to know where she was located. Admiral Pound could only know where she had been. Still, it was evident to him that Tirpitz and her battle posse were in the beginning stages of a strike position. Pound became grappled with fear. He knew that Tirpitz, steaming at 30 knots, could easily float past the home fleet, 
overpower the cruiser force, and tear the merchant ships to shreds. Consequently, he called an emergency meeting. Pound asked his most trusted advisors about their thoughts in light of the German ship's movements. All but one, Vice Admiral Sir Henry Moore, were against dispersing. However, he recommended that it had to be done immediately if that was the action to take. Pound then turned to an aide and said, quote, The convoy is to disperse. Dispersal. After hearing the news, many of the escort ship's commanders believed that the Admiral must have heard enough evidence to prove that Tirpitz and her battle group were out to get them. Even before the last of the escorts had disappeared on the horizon, the convoy's vessels began to disperse. Some fanned out north, some east, and some southeast, directly towards the Russian ports. Meanwhile, the American ships in the group celebrated Independence Day by lowering their flags to replace them with new bright ones. The PQ-17 convoy was now abandoned and stripped of all protection, with hundreds of merchant volunteers left to fend for themselves. When news of the unexpected dispersal was reported to the Kriegsmarine's naval headquarters, Grand Admiral Eric Raider ordered an attack. On July 5, 1942, Tirpitz and other vessels like Admiral Scheer, Admiral Hipper, and six destroyers were ready to set sail and intercept PQ-17. However, Raider reconsidered his decision, as he believed attacking the defenseless convoy was not worth the risk. Tirpitz was then ordered back to port. Still, the merchant ships were well within the Nazis' range by then, no longer protected by any of the home fleet's vessels. As the Germans attacked them, the ships went down one by one. Luftwaffe aircraft launched 20 torpedoes, hitting one Soviet ship and destroying two merchantmen. Soon, the Arctic Ocean was filled with distress signals from stricken ships begging for help, and the naval attacks continued for three more days without mercy. Out of the 35 vessels that left Iceland towards the Soviet Union, only 11 arrived safely to their destination. Aftermath The toll taken on the abandoned PQ-17 convoy was devastating. The financial loss surpassed half a billion dollars, with over 210 combat planes, 430 tanks, 3,350 vehicles, and 100,000 tons of cargo lost to the ocean. Over 120 seamen also lost their lives in the attacks, and Prime Minister Churchill referred to the PQ-17 convoy incident as, quote, one of the most melancholy naval episodes in the whole of the war. Still, details on the losses were kept from the public until after the war ended. After the failure of PQ-17, the Royal Navy's decision to withdraw protection strained the relationship with the United States. To make matters worse, the ever-suspicious Soviets refused to believe the Allied side of the story, and dictator Joseph Stalin accused the British government of faking the sinking of the convoy. Consequently, Churchill and President Franklin D. Roosevelt decided to postpone the launch of PQ-18 until the fall. When the next convoy finally sailed on September 2nd, it was protected by 53 warships, including two submarines and an Avenger-class carrier. However, the Germans mounted a massive effort to halt their actions, and the Allies lost 13 ships. All further Arctic convoys were suspended until the winter. Although Admiral Pound and Admiral Sir John Tubby had brought the Allies a glorious victory only a year earlier by sinking the Bismarck battleship, these two senior admirals' incoordination and panic caused the worst convoy disaster of the entire conflict. Thank you for watching our Dark Seas channel. If you know of a story you'd like to see featured in a future video, please let us know in the comments. And as always, don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon to be notified of all our newest content.